if the meat isn't rotten, if it's not rancid, then the fats you're consuming are not oxidised. Non-oxidised omega-6 is right. not inherently inflammatory. Right. Remember the Volek study, arachidonic acid and omega-6 byproduct actually increases in states of low inflammatory stress. You also mentioned the HbO1c there yeah. and how that tends to be higher or it can be higher in people on a carnivore diet. So here's two things. So first of all, recall that fluctuations and oscillations in blood glucose level are far more damaging than sustained flat elevations. And most of my carnivore patients will demonstrate superb glycemic stability. It might be a 0.2 or 0.4 higher than uh, before they started on average. But if you actually have a look at it, there'll be virtually no excursion. It'll be pancake flat. Number two, using HbA1c often falsely elevates what the average blood sugar is in a carnivore. So let me explain. So you've got a red blood cell and it's sitting in a soup that contains sugar molecules. And over the life of that red blood cell, there'll be a predictable attachment of glucose molecules attaching to that red blood cell. And that will happen in a rather predictable fashion. We say it's three months, but it's usually, it's strongly biased towards the most recent six weeks of the red blood cell okay. lifespan. Now, the obvious factor that will increase the amount of sugar that attaches to a red blood cell over its life is the amount of sugar in the blood. But the other factor that a lot of people don't consider is the lifespan of the blood cell. Now, what causes blood cells to turn over quicker, basically to die and need replacing. Well, oxidative stress is a huge component of that. We know that people that have uh, conditions leading to oxidative stress, like a G6PD deficiency and things like that, often commonly known as favism, then they'll have a very short red blood cell lifespan. Their red blood cells will often die. They'll have something called hemolysis. So if you actually reduce oxidative stress, your red blood cells will live for longer and when you measure the HbA1c, it will appear as your sugar level is higher because basically you're looking at a population of red blood cells that's had more time right. for these glucose molecules to attach to it. And there's actually a way that we can assess this. So, so a reticulocyte is basically a new red blood cell. Um, it's a little bit different to normal red blood cells or mature red blood cells. It contains... Uh, 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 RNA and uh, slightly bigger. So we can actually measure the number of reticulocytes in your blood and that will tell us how many new red blood cells you're making. So if we assume that you're in a steady state with regards to what your actual haemoglobin and your red cell count is, then your reticulocyte count will actually indicate if there's any changes in the rate of turnover. So if your red blood cell number is staying the same and you can see your reticulocyte count, as in the number of new red blood cells that your body's having to generate is falling, that tells you that your red blood cells are living longer. And indeed, when I measure this on a lot of my patients, that is exactly what we see. The red blood cells are living longer and that artificially elevates the HbA1c. Right. 